two, one. Welcome to the Getting Real with Rael podcast, where we get raw, raw, real, and brutally transparent so you can be the best version of you. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. Now, let's kick it off with your host, Rael Andrews, a.k.a. Coach. Five, four, three, two, one, boom. What's up, champions? Coach Rayel here with Getting Real with Rayel, where we get real, raw, authentic, and brutally transparent so that we can help you to be the best version of yourself. I have the amazing Tanisha Arbor on our show today. Hello. She is the new Jordan on GH. I know you know who that is, my GH champions, but I'm excited. I'm excited. So we actually got to work together for the first time the other day. And I mean, it was like some serious stuff right and Absolutely. like like taggart to the, to the taggart gh champions the the old taggart was back i'm just like he was pissed okay <laughs> so, I, I felt it i saw it <laughs> but 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 tanisha was not backing down she was not having none of that like she oh. like she kind of just like but anyways we're going to talk more about that um i'm excited it, you, it's such a blessing to have you on the show you're such an amazing talent and just, just, it's just adds so much texture, color, depth to to the show, and and I'm looking forward to more. But we're gonna jump in, Tanisha, because the whole purpose of my show is, you know, the champions they get to see you up in lights, they get to see me up in lights, and different people, and and they get motivated by us, they get inspired by us, but a lot of them don't believe they could do it. And mm -hmm. so the whole purpose of this podcast that I started was getting real with Rail, because like, what's it like? behind closed doors yeah. it's not all rosy <laughs> you know what i'm saying and we're yeah. going to hear so take us back with that tanisha take us back to the five-year-old tanisha you know somewhere around there what was it like are you only child did you live on the good side of the tracks the other side of the tracks like give us a quick 411 bring us from there to current time how you became what to be where you are now well i um was born in tokyo japan lived there with my family um for a little bit, then we moved to the States, moved to California, then we moved to Arizona, where my parents uh, reside now, along with my brother and his wife and my two nephews, who are the love of my life. Um, and I've been out here um, in Los Angeles for about 20 years now. And, um, you know, kind of when, when I was growing up, you know, had a Great life. I can't complain. You know, I've absolutely wonderful family. And um, when I was younger, I started modeling. And that, I think, was kind of what helped me into this transition and going into acting. Um, I started that when I was probably about 14 or 15 and uh, loved it, really enjoyed it, but always kind of felt like there was something else that I wanted to do. When I graduated college, I moved out to Los Angeles. And I, I really had these goals at the time. I was modeling. That was kind of my full-time job. But I, I loved writing. Writing was my passion. I started writing and um, for magazines, started creating different online streaming um, services to, you know, this was during a time when, when you know, internet was just becoming really a thing. And, and watching TV and shows online on your computer and, um, you know, things like that was still foreign. And so I had worked with someone where we had developed this program where you could watch your shows on your cell phone. And we did this for Verizon. It was one of the first uh, type of shows to come out like that, these type of streaming things. And, you know, it was tough. A lot of people were kind of backing down and saying, you know, nobody's ever going to watch TV on their phones, you know, no one's gonna watch it on their computers. Um, and at the time you had like AOL, they had their homepage and you could get a little bit of news, but you know, we were trying to move things forward. So it was kind of cool to be on the, you know, the forefront of that and, and that, uh, you know, kind of cutting edge technology. And from there things just progressed. I started uh, developing TV shows and, um, you know, with different uh, production companies, but, with my modeling, they kind of threw me into uh, acting. They, you know, they say, you know, you seem like you got a lot of personality. Have you ever, you know, wanted to try acting? I'm like, oh, 
I could try it. Let, you know, let's see what, what happens. And so I did an audition. I think my first audition was for Bold and the Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I booked it. It was just, you know, I think a couple of days we'll guest star spot, but I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. I think they might enjoy this more than, than the modeling kind of thing. And then, um, funny enough, a girlfriend of mine had, uh, an audition for, a, and I don't know, this is, could be bad to say, but she had an audition for a, a new soap opera that was coming out. It was almost kind of like a telenovela. It, it aired prime time. And she said, you know, I heard them in the audition saying they were looking for a black girl, a beautiful black girl that looks like a model, but they can act. She's like, you should come in and audition. I'm like, I don't know how to do that, you know? She's like, come with me to the audition. I have a call back. She's like, just come with me and let's just see what happens. I was like, okay. So I came in there with her and I sat in the waiting room and they came out and they called her in. And then I remember the casting director came back out and she's like, oh, we didn't call you yet. And I was like, oh, I'm just here with my friend. And she looks at me and she's like, well, do you know how to act? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, I know how to act. I've done one thing. Um, yeah, right. I was like, yeah, I got yeah. this. She's like, okay. She's like, well, why don't you come back here? She's like, here, I'm going to give you the script, look it over for, you know, a few minutes and then come back and read. And this were the callbacks for the show that uh, wow. my girlfriend was on. So I went in there and I read. And then sure enough, I ended up getting the part. But my girlfriend didn't. That went in. Oh, my no. I my know. I've had that sport. happen. She, yeah, she was such a sport about it. She was like, I knew that this was something for you. So, you know, and that kind of was what propelled me into the whole acting, you know, kind of world. And I was like, I really like this. I should probably, you know, try and take it a little more seriously, get in the classes, do this, do that. And, and then from there, just, you know. <laughs> That's so cool. And I'm, you know, we're not date Cause like, I remember you've got mail. Like you said, AOL are kind of dated back. And it's so funny that people were like, oh, people will never watch this on their phone. Right. Oh. I mean, oh my God! Look at look where we are, and you had that that insight, right? Oh yeah. I mean, people were were dead set against it. You know, um, I mean, the only people that really accepted it was Verizon, and, and they were cool about it and threw out a big campaign with it. But people were like, "No one's ever going to watch. Why would Why would you want to watch something on your phone? You know, mm -hmm. like when you have TVs." And you know, lo and behold, now most of the things we watch are these streaming services or we're on our cell phones watching it. So yeah. it's interesting. They're, how make, they're making like full fledged movies on it and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And you know, I didn't, you probably don't know this, but we got a lot in common. I actually started my career, Tanisha, as a model. Um, and, oh. and it, yeah. The quick, funny story of it was, um, you know, I, you know, that was my way out. I grew up on the other side of the tracks and, mm -hmm. and I had a little taste of the, the, the acting a little bit and, but somebody said the best way to become an actor is to start as a model. Mm -hmm. And I was in Vancouver, Canada. And I literally, you can appreciate this. I, I you know, I Googled what that it was in Montreal, Milan, Paris, Toronto, and the main hubs, New York. Mm -hmm. And I went and did the, the Z card. We call it Z card back then. I still have mm -hmm. it. It's crazy. I had hair and everything. And I literally <laughs> sent it out to like about like every possible agency around the world I could think of. Mm -hmm. and one agent replied one mm -hmm. and it was wow. penny noble in toronto don't know if you and she said hey i think you can make a lot of money with this mm -hmm. i literally sold everything i had and that was a friday monday i was on a plane to toronto and uh, the rest is history so wow. I, 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 I do now what part where were you big modeling was it like milan paris montreal all over or what I was actually more of a commercial model. So okay. I did a lot of the, the beauty, the hair. Um, I worked with, you know, clients like Tommy Hilfiger, Ralph Lauren, those kind of American mm. brands. I was doing the right. catalogs. Um, so that was ma mainly what I was doing. So I was working between um, Chicago, Los Angeles, right. Arizona, where I'd grown up, New York, um, Texas. I think it was like Minneapolis or something where they did a lot wow. of catalogs okay. and stuff. That's um, right, yeah. Yeah, and once in a while I'd go out to Paris and and you know do some of the beauty stuff. But you know my main hub was really the U.S. and um, you know had a had a long long career. It, it wasn't bad. <laughs> you know, and I, funny enough, I'm going to actually be in Arizona next weekend and the weekend after. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'll just say hello as I'm driving into that the worst drive ever from LA. <laughs> it's the worst. Is that not like the worst drive ever? Like if you really take is. that drive, you're like. Uh, 
it's just boring. I mean, I, I try to limit myself from doing it, but uh, well, now I yeah, usually you just do do playing and, and stuff like that. So <laughs> let me ask you this: so when when did you know? Was it like that time, like when you got that 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 last part you talked about that this is what I want to do? And and it, is that when you moved? And how did you make that transition? Did you get into classes? Did you? How did that work? So when I when I got that show, um, and I think I had started working on some other things. I had I had gotten a movie, um, which was a pretty big movie, and it was a it was a a good size for someone who had never really done anything. I actually, did the movie before I did the um, that that kind of TV show uh, soap opera, and um, I remember it was a a wonderful director named Sanam Hamri. It was for a movie called Something New. And um, I remember doing that and they knew I was green. I had only done the, like one or two episodes on um, Bold and the Beautiful and they, they, uh, they worked with me. They, you know, they had me come in, read the lines with them, do all that. They're like, you know, you're working with these big actors. So we just want to make sure you're, you're up on what, what's going on here. And, you know, after doing that, I was like, wow, you know, like this is something I really need to take seriously just to see them take the time to have me come in and work with me. I was like, I need to kind of focus on this and take it more seriously. So I, uh, I, I did, I started going to, you know, different acting classes, what my friends had told me about. I just kind of started auditing different ones to kind of see if there was a, a fit that I liked. But also at this time, I was still really busy with my modeling and I was, you know, writing and I was doing TV hosting. I had my, you know, my feet, everywhere. I was doing a lot and I was traveling a lot. And I think I started at one point, it all became a little too much for me. I, I, I had to really decide, do I want to, you know, stop the modeling and do acting full time? And, you know, the, the writing and the hosting kind of slow down on those. And I think for me, I realized, you know, let me take a little break um, and, and be serious about this. I would go into these auditions and I would see people sitting in these auditions and, you know, they, they worked hard. They had been studying, you know, for days for these auditions. And I think because I had my hands in so many things, I wasn't as serious as the other people I saw. Started feeling a little guilty because I saw how hard these people worked and they've been in these classes and they're doing this and I'm getting the same opportunity, but I just didn't feel that it was fair. And I wanted to be on the same kind of level and playing ground. So I took actually a few years off of, of acting um, and really thought like, what is it that I really want to do? Do I want to do the modeling? Do I want to do this? And take that leap, that leap of faith to go and, you know, pursue the acting full time. So I think after, you know, about four or five years, I decided, you know what, I'm ready to get back into acting. Um, I want to do this, you know, full time. And that's what I did. And I just, I stopped modeling, um, you know, little things here and there, but I stopped the modeling and just went full force, you know, getting involved with classes and coaches and just perfecting my craft so I could get to the point we are today. <laughs> yeah. And you really have, I mean, perfected your craft. It really is. You can see that. And, you know, I have like huge respect because we both know, right? Like, you know, I've uh, unfortunately, you know, tested false positive a couple of times. And so my, um, my champion, and I call him a champion because I'm grateful, mm -hmm. you know, he's stepped in. We all have doubles because the mm -hmm. show's got to go on, you mm -hmm. know? And as an actor, I have mad respect because there's got, let's be honest, like <laughs> there's probably nothing worse than coming in and filling in for an actor that's already established a character. Mm -hmm, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that's kind of like tough. Yeah, and yeah. so you came in and you fill in some big shoes. Right. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you're doing it amazing. You're you're knocking it out of the park. I just want to say. Thank but you. Tell us about that. Like, what was that when you get the role? You know, you're coming in mm -hmm. to take over a role that's already established. What was going on in your mindset and stuff? Well, you know, what's interesting is that when I I got the audition and you know, I'd been talking with my agents and they were, you know, they're always like, this is the year, this is the year you're going to, you're going to get a series, regular role. You're, you know, it, we feel it, it's happening. When I got the audition for this role, it was right before, right before Christmas break, you know, right before Christmas. And um, I got the audition and I remember reading it and, and the audition was to be a district attorney on the show. They don't tell you who the role's for or anything like that. 
And that was the roles I'd been telling my agents, like, this is what I want to do because mm. my career has been mostly comedic. Mm. So I really wanted to show that there is another side to me. You know, I can do the more serious type of roles. So um, when this one came about, I was like, oh, this is great. District attorney, like, I feel it. This is, you know, I just feel like I can get this one. So I did the audition. Then they said, okay, we're calling you back for a screen test. But then we go on break for about three weeks. So I know I've got the screen test. And now I'm just kind of sitting here waiting like, oh, you know, like, let's get this going. <laughs> like, um, you couldn't have done the screen test before? <laughs> you know, we had, we had some time. Um, and so then I come back from, you know, we come back from the holiday. And then uh, about mid-January, I went in to do the screen test and um, felt really good about it. I'd worked really hard with coaches and, um, you know, gave it all, gave it my all. Um, and, and then gratefully... They, they booked me and it wasn't until maybe about five days before my first day on set, which was later on that month, that I found out who my character was, mm. uh, what role I was playing was actually the police commissioner. So that was, you know, one of those things where I didn't know, I didn't have anything to go off of when I went on the show. So I wasn't researching the previous girls that had played the police commissioner. I just kind of went in there and gave it my own you know, spin as a DA agent. And then, you know, five days before going on, they tell me that, you know, this is your role and you have a lot of backstory. You were actually, your character was played by two other people before. So that's when I was like, oh boy, you know, like, well, this would have been cute to know before. Um, so I kind of just was like, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to go and look back at, you know, the previous girls' works. They obviously are phenomenal actresses. But, uh, you know, one thing that Frank, um, our executive producer, had said was just go in and do you. You know, mm. we hired you for this role because we liked the way you portrayed it. Bring your own life into this character. So I just I didn't bother looking at what anyone else had done. I just kind of went in blindly just to, you know, give this character my own, you know, energy in life. And, you know, now we're here. Oh, yeah. I'm about... Yeah, yeah, I love that. Like in. I said, you're killing it. And you know, isn't Frank cool, dude? I really like, dude, I gotta be honest with you. I really like Frank. I really, I really, really do. He just really knows his shit, dude. And he just knows what he wants. Mm -hmm. He's got a vision. Mm -hmm. And he know. He, I don't know about you, dude, but I, he, like, cause he, he lets us fly. Mm -hmm. But if he thinks something's not right, he really has a really great way with me anyways. He just kind of comes in stands in front of you with that frank way and he just kind of says like he's it's usually one or two words mm -hmm. and i'm like got it yeah and you're just like like you know what i mean he's really great at communicating his vision you think he's i, I think he's fantastic and i do like the way he communicates he comes in and you know he doesn't step over anybody but it's like oh let's actually like do it like this but you know doesn't make you feel like what you're doing is wrong just let's see if we can tweak it a little bit He's a wonderful boss. I'm very fortunate to be able to work, you know, not only with him, but really everybody that I've worked with thus far on the cast. Um, everyone's been wonderful. And uh, so that's been. So you, you just opened that door. <laughs> okay. And I, I get this question all the time and I know, but I'm going to ask you because I know the GH champions. Are gonna, why don't you ask it is? So <laughs> who is your favorite actor or actress to work with so far? Oh, man. Um Let's see. That's a good question. It's, I haven't been able to work a lot with many of the people um, as of yet. I think I do enjoy working uh, with Donnell mm -hmm. because Amazing. he has been patient with me um, and just getting, getting into the swing of things on the show. And, um, and also Brooke, um, mm. I think I've maybe worked the most with them. Um, and they've been lovely from the start, just very accommodating, helpful, patient, you know, um, and showing me how things work. This is obviously different. I, you know, I worked on a lot of prime time and things mm -hmm. like that. It is a different ball game in, in, the, in the daytime world and especially on this show. So I'm learning things. It's also different from when I was doing soaps, you know, over 10 years ago. So they have been so patient and, and just giving me little tips and hints uh, on, on things to do, where, how to stand, um, you know, like just learning the angles and 
you know, mm. oh, if you just move slightly to here. I, I mean, one day, uh, Danelle had said to me, um, I, I was, we were, we were in a scene and I was turning to look at somebody who was talking and then they, they ended up stopping and we were going to redo that scene. And he was like, Hey, you know, just letting you know, um, he's like, if you turn and you open yourself up mm -hmm. like this, he's like, it makes it so it's not so awkward. And then when you turn back around, you know, it's just kind of like a turn this way and then come back. Cause I was twisting. And You're like, like, this. like a game of twister. I, I know he's yeah. like, he just did that to me the other day. He's the turn master. He knows like, mm -hmm. and he just like, he kind of just like with me, cause we've worked together so much. He's like, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> like he kind of just like kind of like like says the thing, and I, I said, I got it, I got it. Yeah. What now, now? Go ahead. Now we can't talk. Um, you know that we're not able to talk about stuff that hasn't aired yet. Yeah. But with the stuff that has aired, Tanisha, what mm -hmm. would be your favorite scene so far? Well, I haven't watched everything yet, but <laughs> but how you felt everything. about it when you were doing it. I think I've only had three episodes that have aired, um, but there's one scene that's coming up with Danelle, AKA Curtis, that uh, should be coming out this week that I really liked. So okay. I think these first episodes that came out um, was really me. I think those these first three episodes was my very first day. Okay. There was a scene I did um, with Maurice, who plays Sonny. That mm. was kind of fun. Um, that was, that was a unique experience and kind of the way I had learned the lines wasn't the way we ended up playing it. And um, someone had tagged me online in the scene and, um, and they were like, Ooh, the, the drama between uh, Jordan and Sunny, I am here for it. She came to play. And I really liked that because it was, you know, it was a fun little banter that we kind of had. It's mm -hmm. my only scene I've done with him so far, but I think that would be the one thus far that um, when I saw it, I was like, oh, that actually came out, you know, better than I thought. It, it kind of left it open, a little mystery between our relationship on the show. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, just FYI, I mean, Maurice is, he was the best man at my wedding. He's like my BFF. We go way back. But, you know, he told me about that scene because, you know, mm -hmm. we're always talking. He's like, mm -hmm. man, that, this, this, this new Jordan, she's good. You know, <laughs> I was like, there's a <laughs> you know, Maurice <laughs> likes that, but yeah. So let me ask you, uh, and then we're, we're going to switch gears and, and things I call five things we, did, we didn't know, mm -hmm. um, even though there's seven questions, we'll get you out of here rapid fire. So okay. what would you say in your career, Tanisha, or, or your life, it doesn't even have to be related to acting, what was the biggest challenge you had to face, mm -hmm. um, heartbreaks, you know, disappointment, whatever. And how did you get through that? I think the biggest challenge for me was overcoming insecurities. And I think as actors, we, we all deal with that at some point in, in that stage. And especially coming from a modeling background, you know, your, 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 your daily, you know, your days are spent being judged, criticized, picked apart for everything. And that was another reason why I kind of slowed, you know, tapered the modeling off because it was becoming so anxiety inducing for me getting up every day. I stopped enjoying what I was doing, knowing that somebody's going to, you know, they're going to criticize my hair or, you know, I'm too skinny. I'm not, you know, big enough. I'm this, I'm that. It was always something you got to bruise this and that just being picked apart. And although I was always a very confident person underneath there's this layer where I was highly insecure and that was really inhibiting my ability to, to succeed and, and grow at, as an actor um, and, and pursue other things that I was interested in. It kept me from doing those things. I didn't have that confidence and I allowed the noise from the outside to, to get to me, whether it was, you're gonna try and go back into acting at this point in your life, you're too old, or you know this, that, whatever it was. And I let that get into my head. So I think the biggest thing for me to overcome was one day, and this, a, a lot of this happened recently, and, and it was before you know me booking this show. I just woke up one day and I was like, there's so many things that I could have already been doing. 
I should have been doing this. I could have, should have, could have, would have, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? Let me just take the proactive steps to do these things because I know I can do it. And, and if I do these proactive steps, it will happen. It'll happen quicker than, you know, I even thought it could. And, you know, doing even getting this show, I, I stopped doing a lot of things I was doing before that were, you know, really inhibiting my ability to grow. The negative thoughts, more meditation, more being positive towards myself and just telling myself that, you know, I am good enough. I am strong enough. I am capable to do all these things letting go of you know negative energy around me that i was allowing to get into my head and i have to tell you when i stopped doing that and just focused and took all the steps that needed to be done nothing's going to be handed to you right but if you take the proper steps to do those things instead of sitting around waiting moping around like oh i want this to happen looking at everybody else doing it i'm like you know what? let me just go out there and do it and, you know, I do the vision board. I, you know, I put on there, okay, I want this show. I want to be this character. Mm. I want these things to happen. Mm. I can do this. I'm going to take the right steps. And I'm going to get the coaching. I'm going to get the classes. I'm going to focus, get the pictures, do this, do that. Whatever it is that I need to do. And I'm not going to be scared to do it and, and self, you know, sabotage myself. And when I did that, everything just started happening for me. And I was amazing that I was like, wow, I could have done this before. <laughs> you know, it comes like, what was I doing? But it all happens for a reason at certain yep. times. And I think at this point in my life, I was finally ready to receive these things. I was finally strong enough and capable enough to do it. And, you know, I think that's one thing that I finally, you know, I've gotten over and you know, it's it's one of those things of manifestation. I think you know, you you see a lot of people, Oprah, this person, that person, that really believe in it, and it is true. It is well, I'm, so I'm true. Huge, you gotta visualize it, mm -hmm. and you I'm see it. I'm a huge fan of man. Oh, you know what? That's dude. That was like, I was. We get cowbell on this show for the big <laughs> nuggets. I was getting goosebumps. I dude, I just that one moment right there. Like this whole podcast has been amazing, but that one moment was like, wow. Just mm -hmm. really that thanks to, for being transparent with that. And, and I love how you said, because, and you'll get this, I, I've shared this before in terms of an actor, my wife is a dancer. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the average person, right. Just to, to respect what it's like being an actor or a performer, the average person will go, they go to high school, then they go to college you know, they have an aspiration, a dream to be whatever. And I've said they, they have what I call the maybe one or three. You know what I'm talking about, Tanisha? The big the big audition or the big mm -hmm. interview. The, mm -hmm. yeah, let me get my suit on. My, this is it, baby. If I get this, dude, oh, we're going to be able to buy that house and everything, right? Mm -hmm. As an actor, we literally do that sometimes five, six, seven times. Hey, you suck. <laughs> You're not good enough. You didn't get it. And it's like, will you think about it? Mm -hmm. We it's amazing that we take that rejection mm -hmm. and bounce back to like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you think it, that's what's going to happen. If you're not putting out the positive energy and the belief, then, you know, you're, you're not going to get it. It's just how it is. I um, quickly I I had another audition about two or three years ago for a soap opera and I had the screen test. And I remember comparing that to to this particular one. And I went in and I remember uh, doing the, the audition and then I took off. I love to travel. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take off. I don't know if I'm going to get this, whatever, you know, I probably will, that kind of energy. I took off on a trip and I landed, uh, you know, across the country. It was about 10 o'clock at night there. I get a call from my agents and they're like, you got a screen test. It's tomorrow <laughs> or, or something like that. It was, it was like one or two days later and um, you got to be there at noon. And I was like, I'm sitting here drinking a dirty martini um, with some friends clear across the country. I had to get, I had to literally wake up. I, I printed out the scripts. I had to, it was a completely different scripts. I had to wake up about four o'clock in the morning, take a car to Chicago to get on the plane and get back there, go straight to this screen test. Now I was not prepared. I'm trying to study on the plane with no sleep. And these were things that obviously I went in there and I just bombed it. I just was mm. like, I gotta, I gotta walk out of here. This isn't, this is just, isn't me. And comparing it to the preparation I had for this one, mm -hmm. it, it just showed me like sometimes in life, you got to slow down and, and 
you know, just do it one step at a time. You know, what is it that mm -hmm. you want? Now just be present for that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I look back at that situation thinking, you know, I went in there negative and, and then I, luckily I got this, the, the call back or the screen test, but I wasn't prepared, you know, mm -hmm. whereas I, you know, I should have been focusing and perfecting on my craft after that screen test instead of taking off and trying to party. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, just the difference between those two situations and, how you know it's just manifest what you want stay positive know you can do it and be prepared i think just you know always be prepared and and be up on your craft because you have those moments where something could just happen like that and if you're ready you're ready you know mm -hmm. <laughs> amen i am uh, you know i take it from the point you're you're so right i mean it's you know being prepared you know i'm a believer and it's like you know when you get called up to bat you know, you better be ready because yeah. if you're not ready, you know, God's going to call up somebody else because he's got to fill that position mm -hmm. and this is your time. So, you know, and because, you know, I'm sure you get this all the time. I was like, oh man, you'll get a, you'll get a kick out of this. And then we're going to do rapid fire. I promise. So have you ever had this happen to you, right? Because, and this is one of the reasons I did the show initially, right? Because mm -hmm. like I get, oh, you're so lucky, Raelle. Right. Oh, because they don't understand how hard we work behind the scenes. But I've gotten this a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're so lucky, Rael. The reason you're so successful as an actor is because you're black. Oh. And you don't have so much competition. Mm -hmm. Really? <laughs> like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh my gosh. I'm going to get into that with Don Donnell today. Yeah. You know, he he's passionate about this. Okay. So here we go. Rapid fire. Okay. So who is your favorite superhero? Oh. This is a rapid fire. Oh gosh, um, oh, Batman. Oh, I love it. I'm gonna go see that tonight. <laughs> you now get to be a superhero. You mm -hmm. have a superpower, Tanisha, and you can do whatever you want. And so, what would that superpower be, and how would you use it to change the world? Oh man. Okay. Um, superpower. Jeez. I mean, I guess, you know, I would love that ability to be able to read people's minds, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, see what they're thinking before they do something, might be able to squash that. You know? <laughs> there you go. I love that. I love that. <laughs> biggest mentor in your life up until this point. Mm, biggest mentor in my life. Ah, oh, gosh. Um, I'm. There's so many small mentors because I have to be so grateful to the people in my life that have thrown little things at me my way. But, you know, my mother is a is a huge inspiration to me. She's a very strong, successful, powerful woman. And I've always emulated her in, mm -hmm. in life in, in terms of how she um, just how she carries herself. I think a lot of, of who I am today is, is because of her and mm -hmm everything that she tried to instill in me growing up um, and maybe things I didn't listen to then, but now um, I think are, are amazing. And, and, you know, she's a, she's a fabulous woman. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, I owe a lot of that to her. Mm, so good. So good. You uh, favorite book. I know this is always challenging, but or, or maybe if you're not a reader, it's not. But what's uh, the first book comes to mind? Your favorite book? Oh, gosh. Um, probably the current one I'm reading. All the light we cannot see. Mm, it's pretty I haven't good. heard that. I love when I haven't heard one. <laughs> now, as a kid, Tanisha. Did you read books? And if so, what was your favorite book? Like me, it was Richie Rich, Little Curious. I, I like things with big pictures. Yeah. But what was your favorite book? Oh, my gosh. I was a huge reader growing up. I was reading, gosh, 10 books a week. I was at the library wow. every day. It was my favorite wow. thing to do. I loved it. Um, I read everything. I mean, from economics books to uh i think as a kid i loved the babysitters club that was my jam oh i loved it it was about these i think it was a group of girls that babysat you know and like it was a whole little club and it was so fascinating to me i loved it <laughs> mm, i love that all right two more questions so this one going back think back as far as you can what was your favorite gift that you got who gave it to you 
And why was it your favorite? My favorite gift of all time? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. These questions. I'm not prepared for this. That's what uh, I like. I don't prepare nobody. Think a moment. <laughs> my favorite gift. Oh, man. Um, I'd have to say a friend of mine what I would say gave me the tools to succeed uh, mm. or at least helped me know that I always had them and helped bring them out in me. Mm. Um, not anything physical, um, but I think that was that. I think this was part of my journey into realizing my self-worth and knowing that I'm capable to, to do more, be more, be the best that I can be. And um, he helped me to realize that and, and, was very supportive and, and a lot of this was going on during the pandemic when mm. everybody was, you know, we, we, we had all this time, this downtime. And instead of wasting that downtime, he forced me to do something to better my, myself and my career and, and helped me to do that. And, you know, it's like, let's get a website going. Let's get, mm. you know, helped make all my reels that I'd never done, put the reels together. Here's a tool I needed to succeed. And he went and, helped me, you know, make all of these reels, make a website and organized everything. He's like, I just want mm. you to be the best you can be. These are things wow. that you need to do and utilize this time that we have. You don't have any excuses right now to say, I don't have time to do it together. I don't, I don't know where the footage is, blah, blah, blah. And I think that was probably one of the best gifts somebody could have given me because without that, you know, I probably wouldn't be sitting here today on this wonderful show talking to you, uh, you know, and just that, uh, that motivation he gave me to believe in myself. So shout yeah, out. That, to him. Yeah, that, that is a huge gift. All right. So last one. And actually this is a question I asked at the end of every one of my podcasts, but yours, I'm going to set it up a little different and you're going to be the first one. And here's why okay. um, I always leave my champions with an action task, but you know, just like literally last week, Tanisha, I finally figured out and it took years of who my true avatar is who mm -hmm. I'm fighting for. And you kind of, it's crazy what you just said, because, you know, my one liner, if you will, now is I fight for single moms mm -hmm. to do more, to have more, to be more by finding their God given potential. You just said that do more, be more, have yeah. more. So this message is specifically going to be to women and specifically single moms. So what would you say to single moms out there or women? Mm -hmm. You're going to lay them down with an action task. That mm -hmm. if you believe that they put this action task into action today, not next mm -hmm. week. Oh, that was a great thing I heard from Tanisha. That their life will start moving in mm -hmm. a better, more positive direction. They'll start to have more, to be more. Mm -hmm. What would that action task be? Action task. Okay. Um, when you say action task, as in... It could be anything like, you know, um, stop procrastinating. It uh, could be okay. take action. It could be read more books. It could be something, you know, anything that you have that's, that, that you use to be successful yourself. Oh, I, I think, um, you know, uh, gosh, I, I, I just think to not let, um, not letting not being one don't allow yourself to be one dimensional because you're mm -hmm. always more than you know i think we get in these pigeon we get pigeonholed especially you know as as mothers single single mothers that you know this is your that's your path this is what you can do and, and you have these they have these dreams you know like everybody you have these dreams that you know you you want to do that but often they feel that they can't and it's just you know just go out there and do it don't ever stop believing in yourself because you are capable to be a single mother you are capable to work at the same time you are capable to do anything that you want to do um just believe in yourself and get out mm. there and do it and it may be hard it may be tough but what's life without challenges and if you can push mm. through those you can do anything Yes, that was so good. So, so good. 
Um, all right. So <clears throat> before we jump out of here, Tanisha, the champions, how can they find you? You mentioned a web page, your handle on social media. How do they find you? Yes. Okay. So you can find me at www.tanishaharper.com. You can also find me on Instagram, also under Tanisha Harper. And, um, you know, watch me on General Hospital as Jordan Ashford, police commissioner. Yes. Sure, that's right that's yeah. right i'm loving it all right so <laughs> champions me and tanisha we're so grateful you spent some time with us i know you will agree that was phenomenal mm -hmm. please like comment share our podcast it helps to make a difference you know you can watch it on youtube as well and this is a great one she looks amazing you definitely want to watch this one guys if you're looking for some tools to help you to be successful you can stop by my website www.rayalandrews.com and a shout out to all my single moms out there remember you're you're important, you matter, you can do whatever you want to. So with that said, we are out of here. We'll believe in you till you believe in yourself. Take, make the rest of the day the best of the day. God bless. Boom. Thank you for listening. We hope our podcast helps you in your journey to walk in your power and create generational wealth. If you liked the show, please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and leave a rating. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Real Andrews. Looking for more tips, tools, and nuggets to help you on your journey? Stop by our website, www.realandrews.com. Until next time, remember, take action. You matter. You are important. And you can do whatever you want to do.